Jenna, welcome to Philadelphia. We're Thank here you very with uh, NBC10.com. We're at the Xfinity Live, the brand new sports complex. It's the hottest place in town right now to pitch games. Uh, so welcome to Philadelphia. Are you excited to be here? I I'm thrilled to be here. One, because I used to live here, and it's nice to go back around. And I did this there, and I, oh, I got my nails done there. I think I changed a tire over there. You get excited about the smallest things in the yep. world. Um, and two, because I I'm coming back having done more with my career, so I'm able to sort of experience Philly from a different vantage point, which I didn't get to do before. Sure, and, and you're a familiar face to our viewers. They see you every weekend on weekend today. Um, but you're in town for, for Comcast Cares Day, which is tomorrow. Um, you're going to be live at Frankfurt High School. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, Comcast Cares Day, what you're excited about and all that. Comcast Cares is this really, really smart way of this great company sort of giving back. Uh, it's like a community service day and 67,000 of its employees are going to go out into the community and just sort of do hands-on community service. We are going to be at Frankfurt High School, like you said, Northeast Philly. We're going to be painting murals and planting and refurbishing the cafeteria, all the things that the high school really needs. And there are going to be little events like that spread across the region and, um, and it's the company's way of really, really giving back after sort of, you know, working throughout the communities throughout the year. It really is a great event, and we're excited to be a part of it this year. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you used to be in Philly, so you know, welcome back. What do you miss most about Philadelphia? What do you uh, What do you have to do when you come back into town? So, it, not to say that where I live now, New York City, doesn't have this, but uh, uh, hands down, I miss the passion that this city has. There's just something electric about these people when there's a game, there's a playoff game at night, or there's a big event in town, or there's a big concert. I mean, people really sort of gather around and, and show up for different things. And they, they just, so much, like I said, just so much passion for the different teams. We have so many teams in New York, mm -hmm. it's hard to really get a huge group of people behind each one. This, sure. team, this town here, if there's a Flyers game or an Eagles game, you know this, or yeah. a Phillies game, forget it. There's not a sports bar you can find a seat at. Yeah. This place, I'm sure, would be wall-to-wall -wall insane. insane, insanity. So I do miss that a lot. It's Philly's one of these great big small towns. You know, it's it's I think it's fourth in, uh, market size or something. But you drive through and you don't feel it. It, yeah. it feels comfortable and quaint. Um, and I miss that. New York City is the largest city I've ever uh, tried to navigate myself through. So being back in Philly, there's a familiar feeling to it. You mentioned sports. Do you have any allegiances on sports teams that you're uh, you're a big fan of? Are you a, a New York fan now, or? Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, I did sports for 12 years. You'll ask any sportscaster this. The hardest thing to do is cover sports and be a sports fan at the same time. Sure. Not because it's a conscious thing, but you you just literally can't do both. Yeah. So the whole time I was covering sports, I was um, separating myself more and more from being a fan. And now that I'm not covering sports anymore and I'm at the Today Show, I'm sort of being drawn back into this beautiful, wonderful, wide world of, of professional sports. Sure. Um, I love watching the Eagles play. I yeah. always have. And I love watching the Flyers play. I always have. So when the Flyers play the Rangers, it's a great time for me. When the Eagles play the Giants, it's just such a fun game to watch. So in order to answer your question, I'm not answering your question. Fair enough. We'll okay. That being said, we know you, you love to do sports and you like to participate in sports. You're always seemingly doing a segment that involves being active. How, mu how much of a part of your life is that? I know you're a personal trainer as well. So, you yeah. know, wh what do you do? What do you enjoy doing most? You get out and do all these really awesome things. It's the best thing about this show is you get to try new things. You get to show up at the office, and the office could be the top of Toronto CN Tower, or sure. it could be swimming with sharks, or it could be doing a whole host of different things, which is what I love and I have so much passion for in, in this job. Um, yeah, I, I, okay. I just, as a personal trainer, I keep myself, uh, you know, constantly engrossed in the world of fitness, which I love. Um, I came from a world of sports athletes that I used to speak with. It's all sort of a part of my life. So I used to cover sports. Now the Today Show is trying to kill me when they, no, I'm just kidding. When, um, <laughs> and I get to do fun, thrill-seeking type of stories. and it. It all has a way of having this big general theme of, you know, tons of energy, moving and, and always on the go. So you mentioned that you used to work here, you were a sports anchor in town. You were actually the first female sports anchor and, you know, a lot has changed since that time. There's a lot more female sports anchors. A lot of people credit you with actually kind of blazing that trail. Who? <laughs> Seriously, name all of them. Uh, there are 12 of them. No. Okay. Um, That's actually a higher number What does it, what does it mean thought. to you to kind of be, be talked about in that side of 
kind of conversation. You see all these uh, sportscasters now who are females, and what does that mean to you? Oh, it's great. I, I feel blessed to have been, not even at the beginning. I mean, I came in, you know, 12, 13 years ago when they were already, we were already starting to blaze a trail, if sure. you will. Sure. Um, but at the time, you would never see more than one or two or at most three women in any given locker room. And I mean, you turn on the end of a game, women are doing sideline and women are in locker rooms and it's print and it's radio and it's the TV. And sure. there's a sense of pride having been in the field, knowing that the field is changing and sure. it's more open and, and the, you know, the doors open just a little bit more. Um, and we have a ton, you know, a, a ton of, of, of mileage yet to go. Um, but I think we've come a long way and I'm proud that I was in it. I'm proud that I had some, perhaps some influence over people around me and at the time, um, it's just, uh, it's a good, fond feeling to look back on. I mentioned it earlier, you can see us every, see you every weekend on our, on our NBC10 on weekend today. Other than the early wake up call, what's the best part about that show? Lester Holt. Lester Holt. Hands down. Lester Holt is my work husband who does not do anything for me other than show up, do an amazing show. Uh, no, Lester's, Lester's the best part of that show. We get along so well. And it's hard because you usually see Lester in a very serious light. The guy's so funny. He, we play practical jokes on each other all the time. April Fool's Day, we barely made it on the air. We were so obsessed with getting the other one that we seriously just barely made air that day. Um, he shares an office. We're, our office is separated by literally like paper mache. And um, he's constantly in there and stealing candy and we're just razzing each other all the time. And you wouldn't know it because it's not the guy you see on TV. Sure. He's a great guy. He's so funny and laid back. And then the camera lights go on and he's the Lester Holt you guys all, you know, you guys all know depend and love, on and you sure. all know and love. So what's your best Lester Holt story that maybe none of us would expect to hear? Oh gosh. Well, I'll tell you what he did for April Fools. Okay. Um, I walked. In, I got into the office later than he did that day, and he had <laughs> he had covered my office door with with yellow caution police tape, and he put a, a pretty legitimate looking note on the door that said, um, "We closed down uh, bed bugs." These are only the words I saw. <laughs> I couldn't even remember the whole sentences. I saw closed. I saw bed bugs. I saw um, vacate premises immediately, and I freaked out. And I literally, I got so stressed out because if you're in New York, yep. you don't even want to hear bed bugs. Sure. And I started running around in circle like the Tasmanian devil. I didn't even know what to do first. And he comes around the corner recording the whole thing on his iPhone, ready to post it, ready to put it on Twitter. That's Lester Holt. He's just this great, fun-loving, sweet guy who, if you have any suggestions on how I can get him back, I'm happy to take from you, any we, and all. We can certainly ask our viewers to help you out there. Oh, so. any practical joke we can play on Lester, all in good fun, uh, I am definitely happy to take suggestions. What about the rest of the Today Show folks? You know, you, you make an appearance once in a while in the week with them. Um, what is it like to work around that crew? Uh, you know, you hear people say this all the time, we are really are a family, and we're a great family. And like any family, you're always gonna have politics and good days and bad days and all that stuff but at the end of the day we work for the really it really we're the greatest show on morning television we have so much fun doing it and the fun it's not like you don't see us having fun sure. you constantly see us having fun between Matt and Ann and uh, Natalie and Al like they're just it, it's like we're all cousins and we're all sort of coming to work every day and um, and sharing this great stage. It's, it's as fun to be a part of as it is for, for our viewers to watch. It really is, I, I kid you not. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we're here at Xfinity Live. This is the, the new hot spot in town. Um, any predictions? we got a big Flyers game going on tonight, and uh, it's a big game they're playing against Pittsburgh. So knowing you're a sports fan, any predictions for us? What kind of human being would I be if I came here, sat down with you for 10 minutes, and said, yeah, I don't think the Flyers are going to pull this one out. <laughs> I'd be the worst person ever. Uh, well, they're up 3-1. I'm going to go with the Flyers. <laughs> I'm going to think long and hard. I'm going with the Flyers. Um, Do I have any data to back that up? No, not one, except I have a feel. We I just like have feeling. this feel. That's what Philadelphia is all about, right? You guys have, like, feelings. You're, like, passionate, fervor for things. And that's what New York doesn't have, yes? 
Well, I will not go that far. I still call New York home, okay, um, but enough. it's uh, they've got their own passion. It's just sort of hidden in different areas. Great. Well, Jenna Wolf weekend today. Thank you so much for the time. It's really been a pleasure. And enjoy your time in Philly. Comcast Thank Cares you. Day Saturday. We'll be watching for you. Yeah, and, come uh, on out. You know, come back and visit us anytime. I w is that an open invitation? It is an open invitation. I yeah. will take you up on that. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Yeah.